Hey, what's up guys? BJ Dell back with a new video and I'm so excited to bring you today's video. Why? Because Procreate got an update and it finally has text. So the update came out last night. I spent all last night and this morning kind of learning the ropes so I could bring you this video today. I'm going to tell you exactly how the text tool works all the different options that are found in the text editor, how to import your own fonts. That's right, you can import your own fonts. How incredible is that? And then also kind of give you an idea too, some uh, tips and tricks if you're having problems even downloading the new update or if you're having problems importing fonts, how to get around that. So if you wanna learn all about that and more, keep watching. Right guys, so today's the day Procreate finally released a version with text and this video is going to be all about how to use that, how to import fonts and just the total overview of what it looks like. Uh, so first things first, I'm working on the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. This is a first gen model. Uh, if you are downloading Procreate or updating to get the 4.3 version that has the text tool in it, uh, do that first, number one, it's gotta be 4.3. If you're having problems downloading it, if you can't find it, it does require you to have iOS 12.0 or later. So check what version of iOS you're running. If you're not at 12.0 or higher, you're not gonna be able to download it. So do that first and then hop on over and download the update. So like I said, Procreate finally has text. This is an absolute game changer. This is uh, one of the things people have been asking for for a while now. Uh, one of my most popular videos on the channel is actually how to get around that and add text with other programs and, you know, import them in. So that video is totally outdated now. No need for it because Procreate does it all. So let's go ahead and hop in. First thing we want to do, go up to the wrench icon up here. And this is where our text menu is. So just click add text. And this brings up the text box. So you, uh, on the left-hand side here, have your different fonts that are available. Next to that is your style. So if a font does have alternate styles, you're gonna see some have more than others. Uh, you're gonna have the different options there. So this one in particular, you know, semi-bold, light, bold, condensed. Uh, you'll have some that just have one and then others that have more. You'll have, you know, uh, italicized and, medium metallic and bold and so on and so forth. So that gives you the options there. Next up in the center here is design. So the first one lets you adjust the size of your text. Um, color wise is actually adjusted with the color wheel up here. So let's go ahead and move that to black so we can see it a little bit better. So colors adjusted up there, it's not adjusted down here. Uh, next thing up under size is kerning and then tracking. Kerning and tracking are similar uh, to each other. The difference being kerning is the dis the distance between two letters and tracking is the distance between all letters. So to kind of show you how to use this, um, you'll see here, let's highlight everything just to show you. So if you have everything highlighted, you're gonna see kerning and tracking do exactly the same thing because kerning, like I said, is just between two letters. So you do not wanna highlight when you use kerning, you just wanna put your cursor in between the two letters that you're adjusting, and then once you do the kerning slider, you'll see the only space that's being adjusted is between those two. When you use tracking, it's gonna move the distance between all of the letters equally. So kerning comes in, um, if you're using a font sometimes, uh, you know, certain letters might be too close together depending on the font style. So that's why it's good to use kerning uh, to adjust that. It's kind of a, a case by case um, thing that you're gonna have to use. And then tracking, like I said, is just the the overall distance between all of the, the letters. Uh, next up is leading. So to show you leading here, let me go ahead and shrink down the size of the text. And let's go back to our keyboard. Let's add in a couple of lines here. All right. So leading, what this is gonna do, once again, you're gonna have to highlight 
and leading is going to give you the distance between the lines of text. So here it's moving everything separately. Uh, if you want to do just certain ones, you know, you can change what is actually selected and highlighted. Um, depending on, you know, what your design calls for, it just really depends. So, and then baseline is going to be just adjusting one layer at a time here. Or one line at a time, I guess. So you'll see that's what baseline does is you can adjust just the single lines to where leading is going to give you everything between the lines here. So baseline two is going to move everything. If you have everything selected, it's going to move everything up and down in the text box. And you'll see it actually extends the text box as it's doing it. And of course, last but not least, you've got opacity. And we all know what that does. It changes the see-through ability of the layer of text. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and delete this back out now. Go back to the keyboard. And let's just get to text. Okay. And then the next one to the right is the attributes. So you've got the justification left, center, and to the right. And then having everything... Um, if you have multiple lines, having it centered down. Um, underline is next. And then the next one here is the outline, which I think that's really cool because, of course, you know, you can go in later and then add colors inside there. So that's pretty neat. And then the make everything capital lies there. It's kind of nice just hitting one button, being able to uh, capitalize everything that's selected is a, a nice little quick shortcut. So... Um, a couple things here with your text. Actually, let's skip that for now. Um, the other thing that you see here is import font. So that was the thing that I was wondering if they were going to include, and they did, and I was so happy uh, because, you know, just pre-installed fonts are only going to let you be so creative and get you so far. Uh, I was really hoping that they would add this feature, and they did. So this was the thing that I was most excited about. Uh, with the the text hitting procreate you can import your own font so i'll show you how to do that now there's a couple ways to do that so let's go ahead and hit import font and this is going to bring up your uh, files menu basically just like if you were in procreate and clicked on import a file it's going to bring this up so you need to get the fonts to this menu there's a few different ways to do that um First thing I want to show you is Drive. Usually Drive works with Procreate, but uh, as you'll see, Drive does not work on importing fonts for some reason. So I've got this Adamania script here in my Drive folder. And you'll see here, there's OTF and TTF files. Now with OTF and TTF, honestly, uh, Procreate handles them exactly the same way. OTF is open type font and TTF is true type font. Uh, they behave differently in other programs, but since Procreate handles them the same, I'm not going to go into explaining the differences behind them. Just understand if you see an OTF or TTF font, know that they will load into Procreate and you can use either one of them. So let's click on the OTF here and you'll see these are grayed out. I can't push on in, uh, either of them, so they're not doing anything at all. However, if I go to Dropbox, I uploaded the same folder to Dropbox and... See the Adam Enya script here. Click on OTF and you'll see they pop up right away. If I press on that one, it loads it in, no problem. So I'm not sure why Dropbox isn't working, or I'm sorry, uh, why Drive isn't working. I don't know if it's uh, you know a problem with Procreate, if it's a problem with Drive, how they communicate back and forth together. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if it'll be addressed in a, a further you know update. But for right now, I would just recommend going with Dropbox. Uh, personally, I use a MacBook, so it's kind of nice if you do use a Mac that you can just airdrop them to you. Uh, makes it a little bit easier rather than, you know, uploading to Dropbox and then downloading to the iPad. So if you just do AirDrop, if you've got a Mac, that works really well too. Um, and then you'll see the Adam Enya is right here. It just has one style, but it loads it right in. So that's one way that you can import uh, fonts. The other way, if you slide up from the bottom, open up your bar 
at the bottom here and hold down on files and do the split screen here. You can do this as well. Uh, I think I put these in designer just to, to keep them separate. And you'll see, you just go in here, find your font, get the OTF, press down, drag, drop, imports, and then we'll double check here. We'll go back down to our font lists and sure enough, Lucidity is right there. So um, that's kind of an easier way to do it if you uh, just want to use that drag and drop feature. Plus, if you have these extra styles too, it makes it super easy going and just, you know, doing them one after another rather than going and, you know, hitting import every time and having the, the file screen comes up. Uh, this will make it, you know, quite a, a bit faster for you. So uh, that is how you import the fonts. One more thing here. Let's get rid of this. You'll see on the font menu, there's no option to delete fonts. So if you've got something that you, you know, import and you just really don't like it, I'll show you how you can do that. So let's go ahead and go back to our files menu. Now, when you first install the uh, update for Procreate, what it's going to do on your files menu under my on my iPad, if you click on Procreate, it's going to bring up a folder for fonts, uh, and then everything that you install is going to be put into this folder. It doesn't actually put the uh, pre-installed fonts on there, which is kind of nice because you don't have to you know kind of filter and sort through and kind of figure out which one did I install, which one did they install. It just has the the imported ones that you did. So if you want to get rid of something, super easy. Just slide to the left here, hit delete, and it's gonna delete it from the font collection. I think it still shows up if you are still in Procreate, it's still gonna show up um, on the side here, but you'll see, where's the one I did? Oh, maybe it closed that one out. Um, yeah, it actually just took a second, it just closed them out and you see they're not here, that Adam Enya was here and then the uh, Lucidity one was down here. So it, it took them out. It takes a second, but it updates. Uh, if you have a problem with that, probably just, you know, close the app and reopen it and it's going to clear out your list there. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get a pretty solid piece of uh, text here. So this is the other thing I noticed when I was playing around and really excited me. Uh, if you've used Procreate for a while now, I'm sure that you know uh, it's, it's raster based. And when you start moving objects around, when you start resizing stuff, um, you can get quite a bit of pixelation to it. If you do it too many times, it really has uh, a downgraded quality, but with this text, watch this, I'm going to keep blowing this up and blowing this up. This stays super, super sharp. So there's absolutely no degradation on this at all. It is perfect, super, super sharp. So this is nice too, because you don't have to fiddle around with adjusting the font size and then, you know, making sure what works. You can actually get the, uh, the type in there and then just play around with it and resize it as you go. And it's going to stay exactly the same. However, as soon as you go up here and start messing with it, it is going to rasterize the type. So, um, like I said, if you wanted to change the color on here, make sure before you start playing around with it that you change the color from the type menu. So make sure you have this up, have your text selected, and change the color this way. The reason that is is because as soon as you use the color wheel up here to change the text, it's going to rasterize this layer. So as I'm starting to drag this, watch here in the top center, you're going to see a red bar come up that says raster text layers rasterized. So as soon as you do that, it's going to rasterize that layer. You're going to lose basically that ability to move it around with almost, you know, the, the vector styling. Uh, and then once we start blowing this up, you'll see pretty quick, see how blurry that gets. It's really pixelated around here. You can see the rough edges. So before you make any changes, as far as that goes, uh, basically make sure 
that you are where you need to be as far as the text goes. Uh, of course, you can also go in here and get this out, the pencil out. You can go in here and do some erasing. But as soon as you start erasing, Well, it did this before. I'm not sure why it's not doing it now. Um, when I started racing before, it actually did that exact same thing where it pulled up that red bar. So I don't know if this is a glitch here. Um, but yeah, it's not It's not doing it now. But you can't erase on the text. Um, let's just go ahead and hand rasterize it right now. So there we go. It's rasterized. And then this is going to let you start erasing on there. I'm not sure why it did it before, but... Anytime that you make changes though to the text, if it doesn't do that, make sure you go up here, click on the drop down menu down to rasterize, which of course now it's not coming up since we already rasterized it. But, um, and then from here, like I said, you can move it around. It's kind of cool too, because you'll be able to, you know, play around just overall creativity, drop it behind other layers in front of other layers to kind of get some nice overlapping and stuff like that. Uh, it's definitely, uh, a cool ability to do, but like I said, just keep that in mind as far as the, the loss in quality once it is rasterized. So um, I think that's basically it for text. There's so many different updates with this one. Uh, there's also the feature to export multiple page PDFs. You can mul uh, do exports on multiple PNG files. And one really cool thing is you can actually export GIFs now. And the next video I'm gonna do, which will be up later today, so watch for that, is uh, I'm gonna show you how to make a GIF in Procreate. It's super cool, I already played around with it, but I wanna get something really fun for you guys to see. Uh, so there's that, there's also a new Streamline feature with pressure sensitivity. I use that for a little bit, I'm not a huge fan, but if you are having problems uh, with you know getting lines that aren't shaky, that's another feature that was added too. So we'll talk about that in an upcoming video as well. So let me know in the comments, have you guys got a chance to use the new Procreate 4.3? What do you think? What have you guys been able to make so far? Let me know. I'm super excited about this and it's gonna really kind of streamline my process. I do a lot of switching between Procreate and Photoshop and Illustrator. So this is gonna kind of streamline it a little bit when I don't want to make the jump. So it's going to be a, a kind of fun trip. So thanks for watching guys. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Like I said, let me know in the comments what you guys think of the new update so far. And make sure you hop on over to Facebook to the Keep Creating group. Let me know in there too. There's tons of people talking about the update already. The link is in the description below. If you're not part of the group yet, hop on over and join us. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.